Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. And we are recording this on Martin Luther King Day, Monday, January 20th. And with all of those uh, hazards in effect, Jeff, that we don't see too much here in Southeast Texas, like I did yesterday, I kind of want to go over what these mean and the times and so forth. So, and then we have some hazards kind of overlaying some others that aren't showing up, like the cold weather advisory is not showing up. Uh, they do that for priority reasons. But anyway, we do have a cold weather advisory in effect until noon, and that's for wind chills getting down to potentially 14 degrees. Then another cold weather advisory goes into effect tonight at 9, and that's for uh, temperatures getting, uh, wind chill temperatures getting down to 12. And then we have a, an extreme cold weather watch that remains in effect from Tuesday evening at six through Wednesday morning. And that is basically your cold weather advisory. That's still has to do with wind chills, but we're talking about wind chills potentially in sing, single digits. Now this is a cold weather watch. So that means it hasn't been observed yet, but it could be potentially mean um, wind chills could get down into single digits, which means that hypothermia could possibly set in uh, in as little as 30 minutes. I think the main thing to keep in mind is stay off the roads Tuesday. It's going to be terrible driving conditions. And like Jeff mentioned yesterday, if you do have to get out, make sure that you have all your supplies with you. Make sure you have warm clothing in case your car breaks down or something like that happens where you have to step out in the cold. This is, uh, this is the kind of temperatures that you don't want to mess around with. And then we have the, of course, the winter storm warning and that is effect for everything in pink down to almost brownsville last time i've seen that jeff was in 2021 all the way down to almost brownsville and then extending all the way over to pensacola florida all those gulf coast counties right now under a winter storm warning and that means that we as i said we're going to have very bad road conditions on tuesday some areas could see snow banding up to three to five inches just around harris county right now short and long range models are showing those those snow bands to mainly be along the i-10 corridor all the way to the coast but anywhere in this warning area that could happen some areas may get one to three inches some may get a dusting some may only see sleet so we'll just have to see. We'll see some light rain starting tonight, Monday night, changing into sleet. But then the big event comes Tuesday, Jeff. Yep. Here are the low temperatures. Uh, or I'm sorry, these are current temperatures for um, for Texas. And then we have low 30s right around the freezing mark there along the coast. We have mid-20s in right in the Houston metro area, then you go north of their low 20s and then eventually teens up in the panhandle. So do expect those to warm up some today to get above freezing today, but then go back down to freezing and stay right around that freezing mark or below for Tuesday. And here's the basic setup. You can see that mid-level trough up in the four corners area that is going to be moving in our general direction that is what's going to give us the lift and then the moisture is going to come from that low level jet you see that zonal flow going from west to east that is going to be moving up into our area as we progress to the day right now dew points are fairly low so you can see that sort of dry line in between these two systems but again that jet's going to be moving up providing the moisture and then that mid-level trough providing the lift yeah, this is a fairly dynamic storm system coming in. It, it doesn't look like a whole lot currently on the on the satellite, but you can see this moisture surge. If you look closely, this kind of milky white color coming up the coast, this is the surge of moisture that's coming up to interact with this upper trough coming down from the northwest. And so that's going to be all the lift and pre precipitation. We're going to start later tonight and into Tuesday. So let's go through the low temperatures. This is for tomorrow morning tuesday morning you can see low to mid 20s across much of the area this will likely be with precipitation going so obviously at these temperatures we're going to see accumulations across the area the real concern is that wednesday morning again some of this is going to be determined on the uh, snowpack that we have in place so areas that have the snowpack could possibly be a little bit lower than this Areas that don't have a lot of snowpack could actually be a little bit warmer. It could actually potentially be a little warmer up here to the north where they, where there's not as likely 
as much snow compared to areas down here around the Houston metro and into the coastal counties where we expect a little bit more snow to happen. Uh, we could we could be a little bit colder further to the south. So the, the whole situation here is kind of opposite of what we normally deal with in southeast Texas. But this these low temperatures on Wednesday morning are, are brutal for us. You know, anytime we get into the teens and we're talking potentially the mid teens, in some areas, uh, you know, this is concerning, obviously, for infrastructure and pipes and all that stuff. So we don't anticipate any widespread significant power outages. You know, with the ERCOT system, there doesn't look to be any generation issues. We have a nice buffer in the system. So lots of supply um, to keep the power generation going. Could you see a localized power outage here and there because of the snow on some of the tree limbs that maybe weighted down a little bit and then it blows off? It's possible, but we, we are going to get some gusty winds in here tomorrow with the snow. And so that should help kind of shake any tree limbs uh, and so that snow off. So this is not like a freezing rain or ice storm event. And so, you know, I don't think the power outages are going to be uh you know really there could you could get an isolated outage here there just because of the weather yeah. but really nothing widespread and then and then again into thursday morning mm -hmm. well back below freezing again we're talking the mid-20s over a lot of the area maybe even the low 20s and so any melting we kind of do on wednesday uh, is all going to refreeze uh, wednesday night and thursday morning so travel is really the issue with this upcoming weather event starting from late tonight and then going into Tuesday, obviously, and Wednesday, and then possibly again Wednesday night into Thursday morning, depending on how much snow is left. And it wouldn't totally surprise me, depending on what some of these totals come in at finally, it wouldn't totally surprise me if there's still snow on the ground Friday and even into Saturday in some of the shaded locations, especially kind of where it piles up a little bit. Can I talk a little bit about the snow and the snow totals? Uh, you can see here, you know, kind of hugging the Gulf Coast. So, you know, the metro area, like you mentioned, I-10 southward now maybe where we see some of those higher totals. And again, this is this is kind of a general average and rule of thumb. So one to three across much of the area, three to five here, kind of Fort Bend, eastern Fort Bend, northern and northeast Missouri, across Galveston, Chambers, and the southern Liberty and, and kind of a the good portion here of the metro area. Could these numbers change today? Yes. Uh, we kind of saw the, the guidance shift southward a little bit yesterday evening, and that's kind of stopped overnight, and, the, and the, it's kind of held up along this corridor. The The big question here is where do these bands set up? You know, there, there's going to be some banding, just like we see with heavy rainfall, and some areas are going to get more snow than this, and some areas are going to get less snow than this. And we think the, the best location for this banding here is, is roughly along the I-10 corridor, and maybe southward, but I wouldn't rule out some banding even here further to the north. This is a pretty dynamic system. Um, we'll just have to see how much dry air kind of comes in from the north, how long it takes to uh, saturate those low levels down here. You know, the dew points this morning in the teens. We got a lot of work today yeah. to moisten that low levels, uh, the low level atmosphere up to get this precipitation down to the ground. And I did want to show this because this kind of shows the variability in some of our short range models. Uh, this is kind of what we call our short-range ensemble uh, models. And the black line here is the average, and this is for Intercontinental Airport. And you can see it's showing an average of about two, maybe two and a half inches of snow. We have several members here that show significantly more snow, kind of a worst-case scenario, possibly up to six inches. And then we have several also that show less snow, more in the one to, in the one to two inch range. And so even though we're about 12 hours out from the starting, we still have a lot of spread in the guidance here and the short range guidance on what could potentially happen. And a lot of this has to do with exactly where those banding features sit up. And the other interesting aspect here is you can see between about sunrise Tuesday and noon, that's a, a, a when a lot of this is going to fall. You can see some of these, these uh, higher totals here show a lot of snow falling in that kind of six hour window between 6 a.m. Tuesday morning and around noon on Tuesday. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. I think, you know, we'll we'll see over the next, uh, you know, if we have any changes today. And I just wanted to show this. This is the HER model. It's one of our better performing. I think there, there's some issues with the HER with this particular event. I think it's a little too warm early on. Yeah. And so it's not producing a lot of uh, high snow. But then this is tomorrow morning around sunrise. 
and you can see these these darker lines in here. These are the banding features that are going to develop. And that is where we're going to see that heavy precipitation. And even here, I think the herd is a little too warm down to the south. And so this is this is likely uh, heavy snow. We're talking a half a mile visibility, quarter mile visibility with gusty winds. I mean, it, it's it's going to be something around here tomorrow morning if this comes to to be true. And then, uh, you know, what I haven't mentioned a lot is the the potential historic nature. Um, even here locally, if we get three or four inches of snow, we haven't seen that in a long time here. Some of the records going back to 1895 comparing uh, snowfall totals, but the really potential generational snow is going to be over here in South Central Louisiana, where the models continue to show six, 10 inches of snow southern louisiana including the new orleans area and that's just mind-boggling i think the record for new orleans is eight inches in 1895 and it could it could definitely be approaching that so uh you know get ready today's the last day travel tonight six seven o'clock be where you're going to be and you may be there for a couple of days yeah get those errands <clears throat> errands run today it'll be chilly out there but um at least you can uh, get from point A to point B starting uh, tomorrow morning for about 36 hours after there. It's going to be pretty rough going. So like Jeff just said, make sure that you're hunkered down, stay prepared and stay informed. You can do that right here on the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed and turn on those notifications. Also check out our blog on our Weather Insights website. Jeff, thank you very much. We'll see you this afternoon for this afternoon's update.